Welcome to the Rare History Channel. 9 Amazing Facts About Franklin Delano Roosevelt Most people know that Franklin Delano Roosevelt was the only U.S. president who served more than two terms, and that he was in office for most of the Great Depression and later, World War II. His New Deal coalition, fireside chats, and the paralysis that restricted his movement are just as famous as the lasting quote from his first inaugural address, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Here are some other Franklin Delano Roosevelt facts they might not have covered in your history classes. Fact number one. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was an avid collector. Born on January 30, 1882, Roosevelt had a lifelong love affair with postage stamps. He started collecting them as a child and later attended stamp shows, bought rarities from stamp dealers, and joined stamp clubs. He even designed a few stamps himself. I owe my life to my hobbies, especially stamp collecting, FDR once remarked. Ornithology and collecting birds was another passion of his. Young Roosevelt received a BB gun on his 11th birthday. He then shot, stuffed, and mounted birds of about 300 different species in his native Dutchess County, New York. FDR also loved to go birdwatching, even while president. Number 2. His handicap was largely concealed from the public. In the summer of 1921, while on vacation in Canada, 39-year-old Roosevelt fell ill with what was ultimately diagnosed as polio, a disease with no known cure. Paralyzed from the waist down, he underwent years of painstaking physical rehabilitation to try and regain the use of his legs. Yet although he made some progress, learning to move short distances with the help of steel leg braces and a cane, usually while holding the arm of a companion, he would remain wheelchair-dependent for the rest of his life. FDR could not even dress or bathe himself. The public never knew the full extent of his disability, however, in part because the media rarely mentioned it. At Roosevelt's request, most images from the time show him seated in an open car or standing at a podium. When the occasional photographer did try to catch him in his wheelchair, Secret Service agents reportedly tore the film out of their cameras. Number 3. Roosevelt was distantly related to both his wife and 11 other presidents. An only child with maternal roots dating back to the Mayflower, Franklin D. Roosevelt spent a privileged childhood in Hyde Park, New York, prior to attending an elite Massachusetts boarding school. He then enrolled in Harvard College, where he began courting another Roosevelt, Anna Eleanor, his fifth cousin once removed as well as the niece and goddaughter of his fifth cousin, then President Theodore Roosevelt, whom FDR greatly admired. When the couple married in 1905, Theodore Roosevelt took a break from his White House duties to give Eleanor away in lieu of her deceased father. Well, Franklin, the president purportedly exclaimed at the wedding, there's nothing like keeping the name in the family. Though Theodore was his closest relative to head the country, FDR claimed to have traced his family tree to 10 other presidents as well. Number 4. Maine and Vermont were the only two states that never voted for Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Landslides became FDR's specialty. When Roosevelt defeated Hoover in the 1932 presidential election, he earned 472 electoral college votes to Hoover's 59. The next race was even more lopsided, 531 electoral college votes were up for grabs that year, and Roosevelt claimed 523. He scored two more blowout victories in his 1940 and 1944 re-election campaigns. Of the 48 states that existed at the time, Alaska and Hawaii didn't join the union until 1959, 46 voted for FDR at least once. But he never won Maine or Vermont, they backed the Republican nominee in all four races. Number 5. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was almost assassinated. During a Miami rally held on February 15, 1933, less than a month before Roosevelt's first term began, former bricklayer Giuseppe Zangara fired at FDR with a cheap revolver. I like Roosevelt personally, but I don't like presidents, he claimed. Zangara shot five people attending the event, including Chicago Mayor Anton Cermak, before he was subdued. He missed Roosevelt entirely. Number 6. Theodore Roosevelt's eldest son opposed Franklin Delano Roosevelt in two elections. 
The 26th President of the United States, Theodore Roosevelt, left office in 1909. While he and FDR shared many opinions, the Bull Moose and his family were Republicans, while Franklin, TR's fifth cousin, was a lifelong Democrat. Naturally, that produced some tension when FDR entered politics. TR's oldest son, Theodore Roosevelt Jr., spoke out against his office-seeking relative in the elections of 1920 and 1932. Franklin is such poor stuff, said the younger Theodore, it seems improbable that he should be elected president. Number 7. Franklin Delano Roosevelt appointed the first woman to serve in the U.S. cabinet. Frances Perkins was sworn in as the new Secretary of Labor on March 4, 1933, and retained the position for 12 years. Perkins, an architect of the New Deal, had already been working for Roosevelt. She was appointed Commissioner of the New York Department of Labor in 1929 during FDR's tenure as that state's governor. Number 8. When Fidel Castro was 14 years old, he petitioned Franklin Delano Roosevelt for $10. My good friend Roosevelt, sick, I don't know very English, but I know as much as I write to you. So begins a handwritten letter the White House received from Cuba's eventual dictator back in 1940. Castro was a teen at the time, but already ambitious. He asked FDR for a $10 Bill Green American, sick, because I would like to have one of them. As a postscript, Castro offered to show Roosevelt the by just minus, sick, of iron in Cuba. Number 9. No president will ever serve longer, barring a constitutional change. When George Washington decided in 1796 that eight years in office was enough, he established an unwritten rule that would stand for nearly a century and a half. A few presidents, including Theodore Roosevelt, tried to buck this precedent. But none succeeded until FDR, who ran for a third term in 1940 largely over concerns about the growing threat from Nazi Germany. In the end, he served in the White House for more than 12 years, a feat his political opponents disparaged as bad for democracy. With Roosevelt's tenure in mind, momentum grew for the 22nd Amendment, ratified in 1951, which declared no person shall be elected, president more than twice.